Good morning, everyone. We're going to give a quick little mute to everybody. And we're going to ask John to unmute. Uh, we'll start with uh, Tyler Donahue. Make sure you use your uh, raise that you raise your hand feature and uh, we'll get you a question for coach. Tyler. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning, Tyler. How are you, man? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Um, how have you seen Kaziah Izzard and, and Devon Ellis respond to PJ going down and having to take on expanded roles? Well, you know, first of all, the, both of those young men, I think, have done a nice job of uh, stepping up and, and uh, you know, having bigger roles uh, within our unit. You know, we've always had from day one, you know, the thing that we preach is it's a next man up mentality. And, you know, you don't replace a P.J. Mustafer, but what you try to do uh, is, is, is get guys to step up and, and guys all do their, you know, 111th, as we say all the time. And, you know, you get a combination, a group of guys feeling that, and, and that's how you feel the role. But both those guys have, have raised their game. And, you know, I think you, you continue to see with Kazai, has already just got better and better um, as he was in there with the, with the, the reps he was getting. And, um, you know, the, the young man does a good job. He just doesn't seem phased. He goes in there and does a good job. And, you know, it's been nice to see Devon Elise um, grow this season uh, compared to last year, his maturity and uh, mastering the defense. And it's, it's been nice to have him in there. He's done a nice job for us as well. Audrey Snyder, then Joe Giuliano. Hey, John, good morning. Thanks for your time. Audrey, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah. I'm curious how you've kind of seen your defensive end depth develop this year. Um, what do you think of guys like Zariah Fisher? And I know James has mentioned wanting to get five deep there. Do you feel like you guys are any closer to that now? I do. I do, Audrey. I think, you know, you know, even going into this season, one of the things that, you know, I, I felt like, you know, as the season um, you know, played out and got going that you were going to see a guy like Zariah Fisher uh, just continue to rise. You know, he was a linebacker uh, last year and moved over with us in the spring. And you saw all the things that you wanted to uh, to see out of, uh, out of having a, a really good end. And then over the summer, it's kind of evolved. And now as Zariah has begun to like master the defense and, you know, it slows down for you. So now that athletic ability can take over. I've been very, um, I've been very happy and pleased uh, with the way he is progressing. So, you know, you're right. We'd, we'd like to get to five and, you know, Smith's another steady guy uh, that's continued to come on. So, you know, we're at that point in the season where you do feel like you've got five guys over there that you can put in the game and those guys will go in and do their job and be productive for us. But I, I'm really excited about those young guys. Joe Giuliano and then Mark Brennan. Good morning, John. Good morning. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing fine, thanks. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Hey, Michigan has one of the best running attacks in the country. I uh, just wondered uh, what you have to do to keep them under control, and could you describe the importance of uh, getting off the field on third down? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Michigan's got a, a really, really good uh, rushing attack, just like you said, Joe. They are committed to uh, running the football. Uh, I, I want to say they're top five in the country in running the football. So we know it's going to be a tremendous challenge for our group. Uh, you know, we're going to have to do a great job of being physical and playing, uh, playing and striking our keys and, and, and getting off blocks. And uh, our guys have practiced and prepared that way. So we know it'll be a great challenge. They like to run the ball. They got a really good running back with number 25 uh, that I think is an NFL guy. So, I mean, we'll have, we'll have our uh, work cut out for us, but, you know, I, I believe one, the one thing that, that our group has shown us, you know, we're resilient and uh, you know, our guys will be, we'll be ready to be ready to go on Saturday, man. But we got to, we got to do a great job of being physical up front and playing on their side of the ball. And, you know, I, I couldn't agree more with you about, we've got to do a great job of getting off the field on third down. And part of that, success for us to get off the field on third down we've got to be keep them they can't have third and short every time either you know because they're very big up front so you know they can lean forward and, and get a half a yard so we got to do a great job of managing first and second down 
to where it's not, you know, third and one or third and two every time. So, you know, we got that all works. Um, that all works together. But we got to do a great job on, on first and second down and limiting uh, the amount of yards they get. So we're not in third and shorts. And obviously, when you get those opportunities, we, we got to get off the field. Got to be really good on third down. Mark Brennan and then Greg Pickle. Hey, John, thanks for your time today. Yes, sir. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. Hey, wh what do you think about the way uh, AK has kind of fit in? I mean, did you expect this sort of impact from him when, when you when you guys got him? And where do you think he still has some areas to improve uh, to, to make himself more attractive to that next level? Thanks. Well, uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, well, I, I think for AK, you know, when, when we first – I uh, knew he was interested in coming here. You know, when you watch his tape, he had he pops on his he popped on his tape at Temple just with some of the flash plays that he would make. Just pure athleticism and overall talent. You know, when you looked at his, his some of his athletic movements, you were like, man, this guy kind of reminds you a little bit of a, a cross between Owe with some of the athletic things he can do, and then uh, the savviness that that Shaka had. And so we knew we were getting that type of guy. But when, when he got here, you know, Mark, I mean, we, we didn't – you always think that you know, but you don't really know with transfer kids uh, until they get in here. And I tell you what, AK came in here and Congo and bought in 100% to what we were doing in the offseason, to our message, uh, our four core values. And he didn't, he didn't come in talking. He came in and worked. And I think he, he got the respect of his teammates and the coaches uh, immediately when we saw that. And, you know, as a football player, you know, one of the things coming in the spring that we talked to AK about, uh, you know, hey, man, he's got to, you know, had to be more physical in the run game because the scheme he was in at his other university, they, they allowed him to use his athleticism here. And we play, you know, the style of football that we play in the Big Ten. You can't run around blocks. You got to strike and you got to be able to get off blocks and set edges. And so AK bought into that and he, that's something that he hadn't worked a whole lot. So he really worked on it in the spring and got better over the summer. And uh, I think you guys are seeing that, you know, uh, in the fall, you know, first game we had him, uh, we, we were messing with him so much. He was like, man, you're about to see your first, you know, six, five, six, six tight end, AK, that's, that weighs more than you. What are you going to do? And <laughs> I think the first play he has a TFL, the second play he knocks the tight end three yards in the backfield. So, you know, um, he's adapted to that and, you know, I think you asked me what what do I think that he needs to continue to work on uh, for the next level. I think he's just got to continue to hone his craft, you know, continue being physical on the tight ends and in the run game and being a great edge setter and just continue to uh, work his craft with his pass rush. There's always little things that you continue to get better, uh, whether it's developing a, a, another counter move off your primary move, just things like that. So it's all the little things that he's working on. He works on it every day. Uh, he works uh, after practice on those things. So we've been very pleased uh, to, to, to have AK and to see what he's been able to do for us this year at Penn State. And what we've been able to do for him, it's been really, really good. Been very blessed to have that young man. Greg Pickle, then Rich Garcella. Hey, Coach, thanks for your time. Hey, Greg, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you doing? Good, man. Doing well. Fantastic. Hey, when you talk about Michigan run game, if they would take a play, uh, a page rather, out of Illinois' playbook and do a lot of that jumbo stuff and big lines and things like that, what would you guys learn from that game that would help you combat it this time around? Should Michigan or any other team that likes to run line up that way again? Well, you know, um, they already have that, Greg, um, that component in their offense, you know, where they bring in the extra offensive linemen or, you know, they bring in – it, you know, they go 13 personnel and they put an offensive lineman in a tight end number. So, you know, we, we've, um, you know, we, we, we've, we've, you know, we've looked at that and, and, and the kids have looked at that on tape. So we, we have, you know, prepared accordingly. So, you know, I, I, you know, again, I think with, you know, who they are and what they're trying to be and they're committed to running the football. I mean, it, it'd be no surprise at all if, you know, to see them line up and try to do that. So, you know, we 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 have um, we we've we've looked at that. Our kids have seen it on tape, and 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 they won't be caught off guard if that's what Michigan tries to do. Rich Scarcella and then Luciano Chatling. Hi, John. How are you today? Hey, Rich. How you doing, man? I'm I'm all right, thanks. Of course, Mr. Pickle took my question, so I have <laughs> for you. 
Um, James mentioned this earlier in the week. Can you describe your pass rushing philosophy about staying in guys staying in their lanes, not allowing scrambles, not getting upfield? How how do you balance that as as the line coach? Well, you know, um, I, I try to I try to have our guys rich. You know, obviously, you know, we all want sacks and, and we want to work edges and get sacks. But, you know, with that is I think in college football, I think more than ever, quarterbacks are like really good athletes and they all can run. So I think one of the things that you have to be able to do is you have to be able to box quarterbacks in. And so, like, we all want to get on edges, but I think it's, especially the inside guys, you have to be very conscientious, like, what, how you're rushing your edge. And if I'm a three technique and I got a two eye inside, where, where are the potential escape hatches the quarterback can escape if I just rush my gap? So I try to have our guys mindful uh, of that. So, you know, sometimes it's based on how we're rushing the ends where they're outside edge rushers, then that may make the inside guys, that may make the inside guys more, we have to be more conscientious of closing off the inside seams if those guys are rushing off the edge to box them in. You know, um, when you watch games, and I see it all the time when, I, when, I, when we watch and study film, if a quarterback's escaping inside, Rich, I guarantee you one or two things have happened. Either both tackles have, have, have basically became three techniques on the outside edges of the guard, and they've got pushed up the field, and the quarterback's able to knife it directly. Uh, that's happened. Or you've got you, you've had a you've had a, a situation where somebody has gotten uh, in the slot, somebody's gotten pushed all the way over. So my philosophy is I try to teach our guys to they know how to rush. Like when you get the slot, that's the center and the guard, and the tackle turning one way. And I'm on the inside and because O-lines can isolate the one guy over there and create a natural seam that we understand how to turn back in the center to compress that pocket and, and, and close that off. So, you know, I think just having a good awareness of that. And that's one of the things um, that I, I learned uh, and studied when I was in the NFL, Rich, about just having great pocket containment. And when you do that, and it, it was great for us at South Carolina, I think we had four or five guys up front with seven or more sacks apiece. Everybody's able to get sacks when you pinch it off and close up the pocket. And, you know, knock on wood, um, if you look at us this year, it's been few and far between that quarterbacks have scrambled inside up the middle off of us, you know. And that's that's been good because the last thing you want, if you're in man coverage and the quarterback scrambling up the middle and guys have got their back turns, that's a big play, you know. So, We've been able to, to do a nice job of that. But, you know, as we rush, we want to be on edges, but we also want to have it. We want to have the mindset of, hey, man, we got to make sure we have great pocket integrity, too. I don't know if that answers your question, Grace. Luciano, Chatelaine, and then we'll go back to uh, Tyler Donahue. Hey, Coach, I hope you're doing well, and thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well, thanks. I know you're worried about Michigan's offensive line and not their defensive line, but I wanted to ask about Aiden Hutchinson. What are your thoughts on him and what makes him such a special player? You know, I, I've had a chance to watch him just a little bit, you know, when, when we're studying other teams or, you know, I, I, I just, from what I've seen on tape, I think the guy plays with a high, high motor. He's a really, really, uh, he's a really, really good edge player. And he, he plays relentless, you know, he plays the, the style that, you know, that every coach wants to, how, how they want their guys to play. They play hard. Uh, you know, they, he's relentless and, and that makes him a problem. He's good. And he's a good technician. He's really good at what he does. Go Tyler Donahue and then Audrey Snyder. John, I think we last got you on one of these calls right after week one. Can you tell us how far Jesse Lucetta has come since then? And how unique of a situation does he face here in the next couple months where he is his a fourth year college guy, but he's so new to this position and he seems to be flashing there. I, I tell you what, Tyler, it's funny you asking that question because when I go back and, and, and you, you watch um, from the first time he was in there and in and you see how he's playing it now, it's impressive. You know, um, again, I, I think I think what the, the young man is doing is impressive going from Mike linebacker with those eyes down the defensive end 
and changing your eyes and your techniques and fundamentals. It's a lot. And he, he handles it with such ease, but I think Jesse's gotten um, better uh, at that position. I think he's more comfortable. Uh, you, you just see things just happening for him naturally. Uh, his reactions to things. Uh, I think he's got a really good feel for it. I mean, it's been, it's been fun as a coach to see him grow from that first game, which seems like two years ago uh, until right now in the way he's playing. Audrey Snyder, then Mark Brennan. Hey, John. Um, at this point in the year, like we've seen Adisa Isaac walking around at practice and those kinds of things. Um, where is he at with his recovery and, and what's it been like getting to kind of see him work his way back and in what ways has maybe he grown behind the scenes this year? Well, you, you know, um, Audrey, I'm not sure about the, his timetable and all that kind of good stuff, but I'll, I'll speak to the part of just – I love Adisa Isaac, and so having him around and seeing him um, working out again and just being around our group um, has been great. You know, any, anybody that knows Adisa kind of knows his story. He's such a unique kid, and, uh, you know, it, and, and when somebody gets in that situation, a lot of times you see it go the other way where they're, they're down all the time and they kind of give up a little bit. You know, Adisa's been just the opposite. He's, he's embraced it. He's, he's tackled the challenge. Um, he's getting after it, um, you know, having the uh, additional time in the weight room and uh, doing everything he can. And then, you know, as, you know, doing a great job with his academics and, be, and being around our guys has been really positive. Um, his personality, uh, it just is infectious and it grows on our guys. So seeing him walk around and in good spirits and, and, and knowing that he's doing everything he can to to get back and seeing him start to come back, it's it's been really good, Audrey. We we miss we've missed him this year, and I know that um, you know he he'll be he'll be really good for us down the road. But yeah, it's been nice having him around. Yeah, time for two more. We'll start with Mark Brennan and then finish up with Greg Pickle. John, you've uh, recruited hundreds of other people's kids <laughs> through the years. What's it like for you as a dad to see your son starting to, to go through that process? You're on the other side of it now. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. Uh, it's funny you asked me that. But I tell you what, he um, my son was so excited when he got his first offer. And I was so, so proud and excited for him um, just because I know how hard he's worked. And he was like, Dad, just last week, he was like, Dad, no coaches are following me on my Twitter He's like, he's like, do you think I'll be recruiting? I was like, yes, man, just keep playing hard. You're kind of a little bit of what, what we would say is a, a late bloomer. And, uh, you know, when he got his first offer uh, a couple of days ago, uh, you know, as a dad, I'm not going to lie, I was almost in tears. I was just so happy for him just to get it and just seeing the elation on his face and his reaction. He was super proud. He was super proud and so was I. So, you know, I'm like, you know, that that's that's really good. Any, anything to, you know, help help that cost down in the road too. That college is always good, man. But I, I'm super excited, Mark. It was really cool to see, and it, and it it does feel different being on the other side, having a child now that that's being recruited. So, uh, but it it was it was really special. It was fun. And we'll finish up with Greg Pickle. Hey, Coach, uh, a little bit in the same vein as the, the Disa Isaac question, P.J. Mustafer has been seen, you know, supporting guys and doing things like that. What is it still, you know, what is he doing at this point for your team, even though he can't play? And then what is your message to him about the future? Obviously, with the COVID year, you know, guys like him have decisions to make. What will your message be to him when that point in time comes? Well, you know, for, first of all, Greg, P.J. Mustafer is, is the rock in, in our room. So, just and, and on our football team, having that guy around talking to Kaziah and Devon and Zariah and Smith and, you know, all those guys and, and, and Jordan Vandenberg and Fatoma Mulber, just having that guy around I mean, speaks volumes. He's got the utmost respect. You know, you're talking about a guy that was playing outstanding football, and I thought he played well last year, was playing outstanding football this year. He does everything the right way. You know, this is the same guy that, you know, um, just, you know, after the, the injury was was up in there supporting his guys and oh, couldn't stand up and just was, you know, leading the charge. And so having him around and he's, he's here every day is such a big deal for us. And the guys depend on him. 
you know, PJ watches tape with those younger guys. I mean, just does so much. I mean, you can't replace a guy like that, you know, and my message to, you know, PJ and I will, will I'm, well, I'm sure we'll talk and, and whatnot after the season on, on, on what he's doing with that right now. And, but, you know, he, obviously, you know, you want to do what's in the best interest of the young man. So, you know, we'll figure out what that is, but, I, I, I love P.J. Mustafer and what he represents for our room and our football team. That guy, you can't, you can't replace a guy like that. Thank you very much for your time, Coach. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you Thank Saturday. You. Thank you, guys.